Well, <laughs> I noticed it was a little chilly last night and uh, my furnace isn't working and there's, I don't think there's any way I could be that low on oil. Here's Brewster. Hey, he's all fully and ticked up with his advantage too, so he should be all right. I'm like, how can I be that out of oil? Because when I, the last time I put oil in was like November and that lasted me through a long time. It was on top of some other oil, but when I put 100 gallons in that, I would keep an eagle eye on it because we had run out before in Ellsworth when Rob and I didn't check it or we woke up at five in the morning, we were out of oil, had to get an emergency thing guy in there, which cost extra. So I was vigilant about the oil usage and I know in my head that I get oil, 100 gallons, and I looked up when I had called them because I got assistance for it this one time and I'm, oh man, I'm like 100 gallons should last me at least uh, six weeks in this place. No, it's not a Victorian, it's a 400, it's a 400 square foot cabin and the basement is wrapped, it's solid, it's insulated pretty much. <clears throat> and I don't know, now my voice is going, and uh, I don't know what the hell is going on. And I pressed the reset button two or three times and it tried to come on and then it shut off again. And it looks like it's out, but it's, he had set that, that level a little lower, a little higher so that when it said quarter of a tank, it really had more than a quarter of a tank, the float thing, because he put a new float in the tank. You know, I don't know what's going on, but it's a little chilly, but it's not, it's like in the, in the I think it's in the high 30s. And tomorrow I think it's gonna be 58 or 48 Fahrenheit. Well, look at that. There's some water there. Here's a cat. Hello, what are you doing, buddy? Come on up. He's a good boy. Ah, oh. This is just some sort of box. They put summer stuff in like stuff for the lake. <laughs> And then, I don't know, some screen fell off or something. There it is on the table. The chaise lounge, which will be down there on the beach. It's just underneath all that water. And it's going to come up to the retaining wall before all this ice gets out. If the ice went out, it wouldn't. Be, the breeze wouldn't be quite as chilly, but it's fine. I just got my scarf and stuff on. My, my $65 boots from... Uh, the shoe store in Ellsworth, the, the, these are mocks, but they're 65 bucks instead of 120 because they were the, the grade school kids ones and they go with my scarf. <laughs> and <laughs> I like colorful stuff, what can I say? I used to be in the theater and do costuming, wardrobe assistant. <laughs> Plus I like to dress up, I <laughs> like, why not? Life's too short to wear drab clothing. <laughs> anyway, there's some buds on the trees there. I don't know if you can see them. It's not that bad out. I don't mind being out here in the sun. There's a silver spoon. Maybe if I pick it up, I'll get some money. <laughs> but they're supposed to be bringing my bike up soon. The, the guy can't bring it up because he has to open his trunk and, and put a, uh, what do you call it? Bungee cord. So he won't freeze himself up driving up here with all heat. You know, cold air corner in his car. So we get another nice warm day and he's up this way. He's still delivering me my bike that's paid for. If not, my girlfriend said she'll be coming up, I think, this weekend and she'll give it to me. And then I'll have a bike to tool around in and I'll keep it locked in that flipping basement just in case you know, somebody wants to steal it because there's no crime around here. I could probably leave my door unlocked if I wanted, but... I do log it just in case somebody walks in because sometimes people around here just walk in without knocking and I can't have that because it freaks me out. I'm like, ah, because I'm thinking of something, I'm creating something or I'm worrying about something, which is a form of creativity. But I just, I just got thrown for a loop with all this stuff, with the, the medical stuff. And I went, what the heck? I knew there was something wrong with the way they were treating him and doing all these unnecessary procedures when I knew he was dying because... They were saying he had cirrhosis, but he didn't. He had this giant octopus of veins on his liver that had been discovered in 2014 and at different doctors for, through an incidental finding for di diverticulitis. And now he's got, this was done 2019. He was dead about a year later and they all missed it. The doctor didn't read it. The nurse practitioner who treated him didn't read it. 
And then the surgical oncologist did all these unnecessary procedures and charged the state of Maine to Maine care for it and kept me from my husband when he was in the hospital. I couldn't go visit him with COVID. He couldn't advocate for himself. He had hepatic fluid in his brain, so he, I should have maybe declared him incompetent, but it all happened so fast. And I just, and then all of a sudden he's in the hospice and he's dead a, in less than a week and I'm in shock and I'm alone and I had to pick up his ashes by myself. And that was that Ken Kinzer guy. Like six months later, they he had all these dead bodies rotting in his basement because he had a nervous breakdown and went on a bender or something. And the people were complaining. The state he went in there and he had 11 bodies in his basement that he didn't bring to the crematorium. And I'm like, what the hell am I doing in Maine now? I love it, but there's some weird stuff that goes on here. Well, here comes the, the breeze again, so. We could blame Canada. <laughs> Just kidding. That's from South Park. Blame Canada. Anyway, there's some open water. <laughs> We're getting there, people. We're getting there. Just maintain. Stay calm. Lobster on. Jennifer out.